here. This is where I'm happiest and feel most comfortable. It's either at the sewing machine or in the kitchen cooking or in the garden. Actually, I have a lot of hobbies. It's an issue. Let me show you today's project. I'm just going to warn you, if you're an advanced sewist, this is going to be like, shh, been there, done that. So easy. But if you're new to sewing and you want a really elegant looking project that's nothing to it, this is the one for you. Let me show you some fabrics. First of all, we have this. Now, if you've been watching my Vlogmas, you might have seen this hiding in the background. It is a type of fleece. It's one of those woolly, furry fleeces, and it has two sides. One side's a little fuzzier than the other. Can you see the little hairs coming up? This side is almost um, velvet-like, so I have to choose which side I want to use because one side's not going to be seen because we're making a blanket. Now, the other fabric we're going to use is this. And I hope it shows up nicely in the camera. It's got a couple shades of pink. Let me turn to this. We can see this big flower. See this pink? This is very close to the pink, to this pink. So we're going to take this big chunk of fabric and I'm going to take two yards off of it to make a little lap throw for my living room. You will see this again. This is going to become tab back curtains for the dining area of the kitchen hearth room. I even have the lining for it. I bought this for the other house. So I have um, nine yards of this nice wide decorator fabric. I need six, I believe, to do the curtains that I wanna do in the kitchen. So that leaves me with three left over. I'm gonna take two of that to make this blanket so then I still have a yard of play when I go to do my tap back curtains. So I'm excited to make it and it'll match. They're not going to be in the same room. They're in adjacent rooms, but it'll look nice and it'll look so um, elegant for a very fast little project. If you need a last minute handmade Christmas gift, this is the one for you. So all I'm going to do is take an edge of my fabric and I'm going to measure down my two yards, which is six feet, and cut it. I'm gonna make sure that it's a straight edge, so I'm gonna pull, and actually I can tell I've already done it. I've pulled for a straight edge along this edge. And I can tell, if I pull this up, and I don't know how it's gonna show in the camera, but this is very wrinkly along this edge, and that's where it was probably um, against the um, roller, when, you know, when they put them on the big rolls and they roll it up. This is probably was the inside of the roll. It's kind of wadded up. So I'm going to actually use this edge though for my blanket because I know it's a little harder to press out and I do not want that to be hung on the wall with a potential permanent crease. I would rather have it on a throw blanket where it gets wadded up and washed and I know it will come out where the curtain is going to hang on the wall and not get washed as often. So I'm going to use the wrinkly edge for my blankie today. So I'm going to cut two yards of this and I already have two yards of this and then we'll be at the sewing machine. All right, I was just pulling this out um, so I could cut my two yards and as I'm unfolding this, because I haven't really messed with it since I bought it and packed it because we moved the whole thing is a wrinkly mess. Like it looks like this may have been wadded up in a corner and uh, they may have driven over it with their um, pallet jack or something, I don't know. It's nine yards of wrinkles and not wrinkles where it was folded, like wrinkles like wadded up wrinkles. So I am trying to decide if I'm going to go ahead and wash and dry this on a delicate before I do anything to see how many come out because I don't want, um, if these are wrinkles that are set in because they were in the factory for a long time that way, it's not gonna work for curtains for sure for me. So I'm going to, before we do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and surge my raw edges. It's 100% cotton, it's called Magnolia Home from fabric.com, so I know I can wash and dry it. Worst case, I have nine yards of fabric that's not gonna work for a curtain, which will make me sad because this matches exactly what I want for my kitchen, but, um, I can turn it into tea towels and um, shopping bags and other things. It was $9 a yard, which is a really good price for a nice quality interior wide. It's a 60 wide fabric. So let me wash and dry this. I'll be back um, in like an hour after I do a short wash and dry on Delicate and we'll see how it comes out. And then we'll hopefully get to make this blanket back in a minute. 
So what do I do when I'm in the middle of a project and have to stop for something like pre-treating my fabric? Well, today I ordered more stuff for another project because I needed to get that done. I also worked on my lists of projects for next year. I organized videos. I had a hard drive crash on me, so I was working on that. Um, I ate some snacks because, you know. Um, I also, we have construction going on outside can't see out the window, but there's, we've got forms being fitted and concrete being poured and craziness like that. I'm having to film around it. So there's lots happening in here. And I'm going to now, cause I have a little break in between things. I think I'm going to play Animal Crossing for a minute. Anyway, I'm going to be hanging out on my island for a few minutes, get a few things done here. And it's so much better. I took, the, I've taken off two yards and the red, what's left is seven yards and I folded it in half long ways. So it's three and a half by three and a half kind of yards wide. And I laid it out in the storage area, which is really a, a carpeted former cinema room, I think, or something. Anyway, I laid it out in there. So there's as few folds as possible till I'm ready to make my curtains, which will be soon. I may be sewing them soon, but you may not see them for a little bit, but I'm going to work on those pretty quickly. So um, just a way to prevent the wrinkles from coming back in. I did a short wash and then I did a regular dry and because there was so much fabric and it was kind of wadding, I kept opening it and pulling it out to keep it from wadding up. And then I did an additional um, like wrinkle release. It wasn't quite dry anyway, so I did that cycle on it and it's Great. And it didn't over dry it so that it got super staticky or anything. It's a natural fiber, which helps, but you can still get static. So now I have got my big piece of this and I have my big piece of my pink and I'm going to open them up and lay them on top of each other, right sides together. And because this either side could be right side, I have to decide which side I want out. And I think I want the fuzziest side out because when you're using it as a blanket, that's the side you want up against you to be nice and warm. So this is the selvage edge of the pink. This is the cut edge. So I'm going to put selvage edge of pink to selvage edge of my decorator fabric. So they're like this. And I'm just gonna pin all the way around my great big rectangle. Now I don't want to keep this selvage edge on the inside when I'm through sewing, but I'm going to leave it for now while I'm uh, pinning everything together. And then I think I'm just going to serge around this right sides together like you would a pillow. So I'm going to serge around the four corners, leaving a little hole to pull it through. And the reason I think I'm going to choose serging is it helps compress this edge. It's not going to be super fat and fluffy because this is nice and stiff and um, firm and not real heavy. My big rectangle and we're going to sew it. I'm going to serge it all the way around, cutting off my selvage edge. And I'm going to leave a little hole. It doesn't have to be very big, like this, just big enough to pull it through. So I can pull it through. We'll sew that shut. And then I am going to do a little top stitching so that the two layers don't pull apart from each other and it stays nice and flat and doesn't, you know, do that weird thing. If you've ever had a blanket sewed like this before, they tend to want to flip around and do weird things, especially when you wash them. And I'm sure this will get washed. So back in a minute after I get this pinned and we'll sew it together. Literally, if I hadn't had to mess with the fabric, this is, you know, a 30 minute project. If you've never sewn a knit, a stretchy fabric to a woven, which is stable for something like this, I recommend laying it all out on the floor like I am. I've pinned the selvage edge together, starting in one corner, and you can see see how it's kind of bubbly at that edge. I started to do that edge and I could see that um, they're just not cut straight. This woven piece, I've cut straight of grain, so I know it's straight, but my knit is not cut straight at all. As a matter of fact, you can see it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller to where I'm kneeling, and it actually almost disappears here and it gets wider again. And they're also not exactly the same width, which is normal. So you kind of start in one corner, work down one edge, and then just keep working your way across, evening it out. And it, you, should, you should end up, like mine aren't the same width, but you should end up with the same amount stripped to cut off at the other edge. This is the biggest issue is that my ends are not going to be straight, so I'm gonna to have to straighten up both ends. I may lose a little bit at that end because I think it's crooked enough, the pink is 
that I'm not gonna get my full six feet um, length to, to get a straight blanket. So I may have to lose a little bit at this end out of the woven to have a straight blanket. Just a quick check in as I pin and get it nice and straight, I'm folding that edge over so I can work over because my room's small and I'm crowded up against the wall. So I can just gently move towards me and keep making this nice and even. So because it is uneven, I'm not gonna have a full six feet. It'll still be a nice size blanket, but it's gonna be like three inches too short. You can kind of see where they're not meeting here at this end. Still will work out good. And then I'm gonna have a little strip left that size, which is I'd say five inches. I guess I could make a really skinny scarf or something out of it. When sewing, whether it's at the serger or at the sewing machine, a woven to a knit, I like to put the woven on top and the knit on the bottom, and that just allows the feed dogs to help with the easing between the two fabrics. If the knit is on top, you're much more likely to get push from the um, presser foot and stretch it all out. I do not know what happened, but all the neighborhood dogs just went crazy. I'm sure you can hear my dog. Something's happening out there. So this is what the stitch looks like. I'm just doing a three thread serge stitch. This is the other side. You 100% could do this right or wrong sides together. So right side out. And this could be your finished edge. I just don't want a serged edge. Personally, I want it completely enclosed and then I will do some top stitching instead for my, um, to finish it off. But this is how it looks. And you can see how that could look really nice as your finished edge, especially if you chose to use um, woolly nylon. Okay, I've gone all the way around. So I have a huge rectangle and I'm gonna go through now and find all of my pins and pull them out because you sure don't wanna find out you left a pin in later on. So there's lots of pins and they're kinda of hard to see. I pinned mostly on the uh, pattern side and they sort of disappear, especially these white-headed pins. They don't really show up at all. So I'm gonna pull all the pins out. Once those are out, this is my opening right here. So I'm gonna pull it through that opening and then we'll be ready to top stitch. I'm gonna to just top stitch all the way around that outer edge. That's gonna keep the edge straight. I'm going to use my even feed foot or like a walking foot for that. That's just gonna make it um, keep everything from moving. And then I'm probably gonna go back in in the middle in a few places and do a few little tacks. You could do, a, I have like a circle stitch. It just makes a nice little circle. I might do a few of those just to tack everything down to keep the two layers from moving um, against each other. And I'll have a completed blanket. So I'll show you a little top stitching and a little bit of whatever tack I choose to use. And then I'll have a completed blanket. This is taking a little longer than I thought, mainly because um, my fabrics, uh, one, the, the knit was cut so unevenly, that edge went like this, it was way off. So I just lost, I lost quite a bit on one end, which is fine, six feet is a plenty long lap blanket. All right, back in a minute with some top stitching. You know what's a real treat? When your husband shows up with a nice cold drink, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. That's the easiest thing to make me happy. A great hot drink or a great cold drink or one of each. So now I'm ready to sew. I've got my little scarf. It's leaving little lints everywhere because it's just the scrap off the floor, but it's pretty. I think I will finish it off, make it into a little scarf. This is the hole. I've just got it pinned and I'm, I have set the machine so I have a pink on the bottom and I have sort of this ecru linen color on top and I'm just going to go all the way around the outer edge um, about a quarter of an inch in and just top stitch it down and then I'll come back and do a few little tack downs in the middle but you can already see how it's going to be when it's done and it's going to feel great and it's going to look cute because it's a nice fabric my favorite way to doing things like this. I'm gonna definitely do this again in a really pretty toile because I just love a toile. So this is how the top stitch looks on this side. And this is how it looks on the other side. This is my little hole that I just sewed up. All right, we're just gonna go all the way around. This is the stitch that I'm going to use. And here it is on the machine. And what I've done is I've just measured, this is the very center of my 
little blanket. So that's where I'm going to put my first little circle. And then I'm going to just measure out um, some even little spots, I'm just marking it with a pin. And I'm gonna do a couple more little tacks like this. And that's just gonna keep everything together. Then I'm gonna give it a light little press and my blanket will be done. Move the pin out of the way. I have a finished blanket. I'm just gonna hold it up so you can kind of see. It's nice and big, it completely covers me. And this is the back side. It's going to look very nice in my living room. And I just did a few little, they're very hard to see, right down the middle, I did a few little tacks, and I do mean a few, like four. Just enough to keep it um, from sliding around too much. So I don't even know if you can see it. it, they just disappear, but there it is. All right, so I'm going to go put this on my sofa and take a few pictures so you can see how cute it is. There it is, my great big throw blanket. It's actually perfect sized. It could even work for two people. It's nice and soft against the skin, and this side's pretty when you're sitting in it and people can see you. Still looks nice in the room. See you next week for another fun video. And since I'm doing Vlogmas, I'll see you tomorrow for another Vlogmas.